Hello and welcome to the fifth video of the online workshop, online Archon workshop object photogrammetry for archaeology. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do it a little bit m different this time. I'm also experiment a little bit with the different kinds of recording myself for uh, workshops. So this uh, part of the workshop is gonna be a little bit more fluid and a little bit more natural because I'm gonna talk you through uh, a little bit more advanced techniques. So at this point, I expect of you to already know the basics of the software of um, Agisoft Metashape. And uh, for this project, we're gonna work on a challenge. Uh, it's part of my own uh, data set, this Etruscan Kiatos uh, from the Allard Pearson Museum in Amsterdam, or Allard Pearson, I should say, the University Museum of Amsterdam. Um, this object is a little bit of a challenge because it has al had already featured in one of the previous videos, but it's a bit of a challenge because it consists of three different sets of data. And each of these uh, photo sets is a little bit different so I have actually two photo sets that are from the top side. But as you can see here, uh, the scale bars are aligned on the sides. Uh, they are parallel to each other. And on the other photo session, the uh, scale bars are not parallel to each other. The reason that I, do, uh, that I had done this was because I forgot to photograph the inside of this cup. And then the second time I had to reposition the scale bars. Uh, it wouldn't have mattered if I had positioned them also parallel to each other. I would not be able to exactly reconstruct the scene that I had photographed the first time. So I had to work with something else. But that means I have to process these different photo sets of the top side of this Kiatos uh, separately and also of the bottom side. So I have three separate photo sets that have to be uh, processed separately uh, and then uh, aligned and merged together in one object. So I first like to show to you what happens if you don't do this, if you don't process them separately, but simply try to align them all together uh, in one point cloud. What you can see here is that it has tried to match part of the scale bars because the uh, Metashap found them uh, quite recognizable. So it tried to match these parts, the scale bars and the actually the, the turntable, but that resulted in the cups being upside uh, on top of each other while they should be aligned. So the inside and the outside are on top of each other, or the bottom part and the, and the top part. Uh, and this is of course something that we can't work in it and it forces us to work with this, uh, to, it forces us to uh, process these different photo sets separately. So maybe I'm not going to explain in detail anymore the uh, all the steps that are needed because I assume that you already know everything. Um, so we start with a new file. Uh, you will find the needed data sets in uh, the provided uh, in the provided folders where I have one called upside down, one called upside up one, and one called upside up two. So we open the upside down first, we select them and you drag them to here. Now it is important not to add the other photo to the same chunk as I explained to you. So we need to add a chunk. So we add a chunk we go to the next group of photos and we drag them inside. Then we add another chunk and we add the last group of photos. 
Now, it is important, of course, always to keep your work well organized and uh, clear. So uh, it's better to start with renaming the chunks. This is upside down. Rename it upside up one. Rename. I think for this kind of part, it would be easier, I guess, to temporarily stop the video to pause it. Um, well, we got there anyway. So what we have to do next is to uh, start aligning these different uh, photo sets. Well, you can, of course, as I explained in the previous video, um, um, first, uh, first estimate image quality. You can do this, but you will find that the image quali quality of all these photos is sufficient. So you can also skip this. So the workflow align photos um and we choose for this time medium generic pre-selection okay now we pause the video and we are back it's finished the first uh chunk at least uh it successfully aligned all the 64 cameras um of course you can go in each uh each at a time and go to workflow, align photos, and then with the second time. But with large photo sets with many chunks, it's, uh, you can also automate this task. Uh, it's called, uh, I will show you this trick, it's called batch process. Um, you can add align photos. Now, we're, now in this case, we're not gonna align photos of all chunks, but we can see, say, only the unprocessed chunks, uh, medium, these are the settings that you get in the normal pop-up as well. Then you hit OK. Save project after each app. Always smart to have that selected. And now it's going to process automatically the remainder of the unprocessed chunks. Oh, I have to save the file first. So the proces processes have finished. Um, if this takes a very long time for you, you can always try to do it on low settings. Uh, but even then it might take a while if your laptop is not that strong. So um, there is a possibility to skip these steps and go to the next uh, one because I've provided all the different steps in separate Metashape files. So you can simply open them to go to the next step. Uh, the order of these steps is a little bit different because I changed the order for this uh, for this particular workshop, but um, all the steps are included. So back to our scene. Yes. So we have uh, three different uh, chunks here. You can, uh, the chunks do not show the point cloud um, all at the same time. So you have to open them. And as you can see, they are on separate locations because as far as Mediship goes, these are separate models. So the next step is, as usual, go to the dense cloud well now the next step is of course to make the bounding box a little bit smaller and place them i will let you uh, do that yourself so we go in these modes Well, I guess you remember from the previous video, you position them and rotate them uh, so they are in the center of the of the grid, and then you 
resize the region so it fits better around the object and it doesn't select uh, all the points it excludes all the points that are not part of the object at least most of the points so I let you do this uh, yourself I pause the video for a while and we get back when you finished um, I just want to remind you make use of the predefined views and the orthographic mode to uh, position the, the object and the and the bounding box the region so uh, you go into orthographic mode top and then resize the region to here to here and then you check on the side if the box is still you see the box is not encapsulating the entire object so this top part would have been excluded if I wouldn't have checked so I resize this and I'm going to check the other objects as well yes there was this problem here as well okay so now we have aligned them uh, to the grid and scaled the regions we go to the next step and that's the build dense cloud step in fact we can also do the same thing with the batch process here we can deselect this batch process because we don't need to redo that do you want to add a build dense cloud all chunks i put it like for now the quality on low that filtering mild point colors well it's nice to look at colors but we don't really need them but i leave it on for now and we hit ok and then it's waiting again i'll be back in a second but in reality 20 minutes so we're back that didn't take 20 minutes but I guess like 10 to 15 but we don't care um, so the uh, dense clouds have been have been processed and as you can see here we have a very nice dense cloud for the upside down and in this case we have also a nice dense cloud for the upside up with, with a hole in the bottom and that was the reason why I photographed the upside up too to fill the hole in the bottom okay as you can see uh, there is still quite a lot of uh, redundant points uh, mainly the points from the white foam again and from the edges uh, resulting from the background uh, in the previous video I uh, taught to you a technique using the uh, removing the color po colored points of the uh, dense cloud so we're gonna use this here as well so we are gonna select point by color select pick a screen color I want this one okay set a tolerance uh, put it for the seven it's sometimes a bit of a gamble sometimes it selects too much sometimes it doesn't select enough but it seems to be all right so we delete these points um, we can also go into the select tool and then simply select these areas it's also pretty fast look this area at the bottom we don't need
so I leave you up to it uh, to uh, cleaning these again using the techniques I just saw and you have already practiced in a previous video so just a note for all those perfectionists uh, of you out there uh, you can go in to these models and clean them as thoroughly as your perfectionistic drive forces you but actually that is not yet necessary for this step because at the end we get the opportunity again um, when we have all aligned and merged the models the point clouds uh, to recalculate the model and then in very high resolution um, so basically what we're doing now is uh, creating rough models in order to align and merge them Another tip, also for instance, uh, in this upside up one dense point cloud, you can see there's a lot of uh, noise, white noise at the bottom. Um, you don't have to be that careful in cutting away that noise because we have another data set of photos that have already captured the entire bottom of this uh, of this uh, kiatos. So we can just roughly cut off this part of the bottom and if we cut off a little bit a little part of the vessel itself it doesn't matter because it's covered already by one of our, our other data sets all right I have roughly cleaned up the three different chunks uh, so we're ready basically for the next step Oh, I have to correct something, by the way, that uh, about something that I said earlier. I said earlier that uh, calculating point colors is not so important because you don't really need them. Uh, this was, of course, a mistake. We we need these point colors a lot. By otherwise, we won't be able to select uh, use the select by color tool. So even though we don't use these for visualization, they are very useful for selection. So I stand corrected. Thank you, Time. Mm, the next step in the workflow is to build meshes for each and in the, uh, all of them. Uh, we could do that um, with the batch function again but I prefer to check my meshes individually so I will just do them one by one select low um, I don't want interpolation interpolation is basically that it tries to fill the, the gaps um, and that's something that I don't want for this stage as of yet. So, okay. That was fast. And here we are. A rough version of this one. Oh, I didn't clean this one. Oh no, wait. The dense cloud wasn't selected. Workflow. Build mesh. Low. Okay. Yes. Bit noisy. It's fine, I guess. Photo. All right, so now we have meshes of each and all of them. We are ready for the next step because the only reason actually we created these meshes is because we're gonna use them to mask out the object on the photos. Uh, and that will allow us to align the photos or to align the different data sets based on the masked area only. Uh, 
and without so without take uh, it otherwise it would it would take into account the entire scene which would not be possible to align uh, with each other as I explained before so how do we do this to mask these based on this model well there is a useful function for this uh, we select them right click and we choose mask input mask from model replacement in fact we can do the entire workspace so it will do it for all chunks that are in my workspace all right let's see if it's going to work i pause it again so it finished let's see if it uh, worked uh, here in the photo panel we can also turn on and off the mask so show mask it is this button and then you can see it has masked out the area around it let's see if it also worked in the other it also seems to have worked here you see it is not a very neat mask but it just needs to mask that small area that uh, that on which there are enough uh, recognizable features so it can match the different photo sets without being confused by uh, the distor distor disturbing uh, surroundings with the scale bars and the uh, and the turntable so now we can align the chunks based on what is in the mask or what is out of the mask what is not masked so that step is as follows align chunks we all want them uh, we want it point based we could do now a higher accuracy but that would take a long time mm, i'm not sure if generic pre-selection in this case would be advisable so i just do it uh, so we're back and it uh, didn't work with me um, and that's because I forgot something. Maybe some of you paid attention and already saw what I forgot. Uh, but I forgot to apply the mask, so it did not try to align the Kietos based on the mask area alone, but on the entire photo again. So, and you can see what the result is. The objects are not aligned. Well, good to know that it still doesn't work. So, um, rather than align the chunks with no mask, we choose the key points. And we leave this on and we select OK again. And back to waiting. And we're back. Let's see if it works. Yes, it appears to have worked. You can see that it worked. If you select the chunks one by one, you see that they are aligned. Well, that is great, because then we can go on to the next step, which is merging the chunks. Merge dense clouds. We don't need the models to be merged because we're gonna recalculate the model anyway. Um, yes. So it created a new chunk that includes all the dense clouds. So as you can see, it is uh, still a little bit messy around the edges, but that's something that we're gonna solve next. Because the entire purpose of going 
through these steps was to have a merged and aligned aligned and merged chunk uh, one single chunk of all the photos and now we can repeat all these steps from the workflow again in order to generate a high quality model so we start with align photos uh, build mesh build dense cloud build mesh and you can go on high settings but that means you have to wait uh, quite a while uh, and I already actually did it with uh, this particular model and it turned out that it was a little bit problematic because I wasn't thorough enough with the cleaning uh, so yes uh, you should have uh, I should have been a little bit more careful in cleaning this because it created mass that are a little bit um, inaccurate especially these areas which still created uh, some uh, issues however uh, the most important thing that you should know that with the realignment of everything together you select align photos and uh, very important you apply the mass to the key points and it may be advisable at least in my previous run it didn't work with generic pre-selection on generic pre-selection can be turned off it takes longer but it is more complete and the alignment is therefore better Another thing that you can do to improve the alignment and therefore improve the accuracy of your model is go to tools and uh, optimize cameras. These, uh, these, uh, these terms are all for uh, different kinds of lens properties lens distortions and uh, it can look at these and correct the camera alignment uh, based on yeah your specific camera and uh, lens properties and uh, will kind of fine-tune everything so it is the points are even more accurate uh, that is something that you can do uh, if you want to know what all these different uh, kind of terms uh, mean you can find it on the internet um so uh, that's something that uh, you can do by yourself next if you have to wait too long of course you can go to the next step in this process so go to align to dance to or uh, and then to mesh to uh, to see all the completed steps um because from dense uh, onwards, it is basically the same as you have done before, only on higher settings. So you can do this uh, now by yourself. Um, and if you have finished, you would have, uh, have something that looks like this. This is a completely, or is it this? Uh, yeah, this is no point cloud. Mm, oh, this is, so this is the mesh model. And then the textured model looks like this. Ain't that pretty? So we're almost finished. There's just one important step to be left, and that is uh, the scaling of your model. Uh, the scaling was already explained in uh, the previous uh, tutorial video so you should know the basic process which was uh, based on identifying these markers on each photo uh, what you should take in mind however is that we're working with a merged data set of three different chunks so we cannot just uh, have the software like uh, and an analyze all the different uh, all the photos of the three different chunks because then it will mix up all uh, three different kinds of scale bars and it won't be uh, able to 
uh, to scale the model correctly. So we should choose one of the original data sets and use that as the reference for SK. So I choose the one that is uh, the data set that of the Kietos that's upside down, select the first and I select the last. So I go tools and markers, detect markers, and then process selected cameras only. So it is only process the ones that we have selected. I say everything twice, just to be clear. And as you can see, it found all the targets. And as you may remember, oh no, these are different. So two and four and three and six. So two and four and three and six are on the same uh, on the same uh, uh, on, on the same scale bar. Yes. So. 2 and 4 we select create scale bar and 3 and 6 create scale bar there there 0 0.15 centimeters 0 0.15 centimeters yeah don't forget you have to work in reference and not in workspace in order to do this then we refresh and now the model should be all right yeah, it gives me a very small error, so it's very accurate. At least it appears to be very accurate. Uh, and now the last thing uh, before we can export the model is rotating it and moving it to the center of the grid. So I leave you to that. Uh, thank you for following along and then I will see you in the next video which is about uh, exporting the model.